Mr. Von de Leo was a, uh, the son of a um, entrepreneur uh, company in Rotterdam, uh, Holland. And they uh, commissioned at that time the best modernist architects to do a, a very big plant. So when my father was on his world tour in 1930, he made a point to stop in Rotterdam and see this building. At that time, he met Vandaleo. Uh, and uh, Vandaleo said, well, I would love to see what you're doing in Los Angeles. So he said, come, come visit. So very, uh, within six months, Vandaleo came to Los Angeles. So Vandaleo said, you know, you should build your own house. You have a chance to experiment and, and uh, show your ideas in this house. And my father said, that's a wonderful idea, but I don't have the money for that. Well, how much would it take? Well, my father didn't, hadn't thought about it. He didn't, you know, he said $3,500. Oh, no problem. So he wrote a check and handed him the money and says, build the house. And so that's how the whole thing started. And of course, he called the house his VDL house and started planning it right away. And within six months, he had the plans drawn. And the very next year, 1932, started construction here and finished later in the year. And we moved in. At the time, I was in an apartment a couple of blocks away. My first wife lived just down the street. It was almost midnight. She called me on the phone and said, you better run down. Your parents' house is on fire and the fire department is down there. So they came home and I picked them up from the airport. And on the way back, I said, I'm sorry to have to give you the bad news. They were kind of prepared. When I drove them here, I had arranged with Shulman to meet us at this site. So Shulman got these wonderful shots of my dad. Um, after that, my father said, you know, I'm in my mid-70s. Um, I don't think I have the energy to rebuild this place. That was more or less our first decision. Then I thought about it a little bit and I said, well, let me do a little research. By that time, my parents had kind of gotten used to the idea a little bit. And then we started uh, uh, brainstorming about uh, what could we research this time around, new ideas. So it's an opportunity to do something different and something original and something fascinating, interesting. And uh, <clears throat> we decided to try to replicate the same thing that my father had done in the first house, which was to invite people to donate materials in exchange for being able to have uh, publicity connected with this project. Try to learn from the experience. Having lived there for 30 years, what can we learn to do better this time? Well, one idea was to bring water into the, into the site and experiment with the, what can you do with that idea. Another one was to use mirrors to, to, to expand the space and to give certain effects. Uh, we had the idea at a certain time to um, air condition the interior because of all the noise outside. So you don't have the noise and you don't have the disturbance, but you have the fresh a fresh environment. So we were gonna, that was another idea. So we had some ideas like that. Okay, we're gonna still call this the research house. But mostly to, again, recall the relationship to the lake. And also it, it gives a dynamic quality to the environment. The water's always moving reflections, everything is different. So it's a very dramatic, dynamic feature. 
The louvers were something my father invented, but then we, we expanded. We used them many places afterwards. And unfortunately, it's, it's fallen out of favor. You don't see it so much anymore. But what I like about it, if it's working, is it's a dynamic facade. The facade changes from time to time. So that's very interesting, makes the building more interesting to have it, you know, actually respond to the nature. It's an attempt to give a more of a detailed look to it and also to, to carry the eye even out further beyond the structure itself. You know, these pieces that extend out beyond it are just to expand the horizontal quality of it. We had quite a bit of discussion during the design period of what, and then we even had different colors of paint to differentiate these different shapes. And we had a lot of fun with it, we enjoyed it. And then we had the idea, when you look out here, you'd see the ugly roofs of the neighbors. And, but we wanted to focus on the trees in the distance. So that gave rise to this panel here installed on the trellis with this reflective glass so that you don't see those ugly roofs. You look over it and you see all the nice trees in the distance. That is strictly a functional feature to hide the penthouse for this elevator, which sticks up above the roof, and also the solar control for the louvers. Pretty universal. Uh, everybody likes to sit with some kind of protection from the sun and, um, and be in contact with the nature. So yes, I think it has an application and it'd be very interesting to see He was extremely um, imaginative and innovative and uh, invariably on, on, on almost every job he found some element that the owners had not thought about to emphasize or to, to work on. And I found that fascinating to watch because I'm sitting there and he's coming up with these ideas, you know, it's really very inspiring to watch the mind at work, you know, that comes up with these kinds of concepts. 